Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truths today. Now, this is a new week and hear me, God has a lot of good things for you this week. That's why I want us to start, for, start by calling forth our daily bread today. Are you ready with me? Join me right now as we declare together. Say with me, say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, that's the way to go on a daily basis. Now, you don't have to wait for me. When you wake up in the morning, you can declare this and believe it. And it's going to come to pass. You're going to see a miracle today. Praise God. Father, we honor you this morning. Thank you for your great love that you have released upon us. And Lord, we are set to receive your word. And I declare today, every body is lifted. Every yoke is destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Mark. Mark chapter 12. Now, we are looking at something very important this week. And I titled it, Walking in Love. Walking in Love. Now, hear me. If you've got to walk by faith, which is the life of the believer, because the Bible says um, the just, who is the believer? The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by by faith. Now, if you've got to walk by faith and see your faith walk, hear me, faith would not walk unless it is on resting on love. But the Bible says faith walks by love. Now, if faith walks by love, notice the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. But the fact that faith has come doesn't mean it would walk. See, you might receive faith, but then doubt, unbelief can affect your faith. Just like Jesus said in the parable of the sower. He says, the sower soweth the word. Now, he says, some of it fall, fell by the wayside. Now, you want to think of this not just as a man preaching. You want to think of it also as people receiving the word of God. So when it falls by the wayside, because it has no much air, the sun scorches it and it dies. See? Now, what does it mean? It doesn't have, the word came, but it had nothing to sit on. It had nothing to operate by. So what happens? It dies. So God can give you his word, but you don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to handle it. And then suddenly... You, know, you can only remember, you know, one time God told me this thing, but then you can't see any evidence of it. Why? Because there was no love for faith to operate by. I want you to understand this. Faith works by love. So there is no way we're going to talk about faith and then you don't understand what love is. Because if there is no love, faith will be hindered seriously. You receive the word of God, you're excited by it, but if there is no love, and I found out that, you know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit begins to open your understanding to some things, you will begin to look around you, plus you, and begin to wonder, how come we had this thing all mixed up before? I realize many, many of us don't even understand what love is. Now, I want to show you something. I say Mark chapter 12, and we are reading from verse 28. And watch this now, Mark 12, 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that, they, that he, that's Jesus, had answered them well, he said, which is the first commandment of all? Now, I love this man. I love this Pharisee. He's a scribe, actually. Now, a scribe means a teacher of the law. Now, for you to be a teacher of the law, then you have a lot of reasoning to do. 
See, now I love this man particularly because he's not a, he's not one who's quick to speak. So he was there. Now, if you read the whole book of um, Mark chapter 12, they were reasoning with Jesus. They brought different things. That's when they say, who should we pay um, tax to Caesar or God? You know, and, and then they, they brought different things to Jesus. And, and the Bible said they were reasoning. They were not arguing. They were reasoning. You see, now they would throw up something at Jesus. I mean, you, you, you know the law, right? You know the word, right? Okay, explain this to us. Now, you know all these things we do arguments you have on the sidelines and then now you now find an opportunity with, for, to meet someone who you believe knows or you feel knows or is acting like he knows and I, okay good let me ask you this question that has been in my heart that's what's going on so now this scribe he was there and watching he didn't speak he was watching and seeing how jesus was answering all their questions and then he thought to himself this guy must know something. This guy must know something. All right. So I want to throw a question at him. A very important. Now this is a very important question. I'm going to throw a very important question and I'm see how he's going to reason it out or he's going to bring forth an answer. So he said, which is the first commandment of all? Now, now I want you to get something. You, if you don't know why he asked this question, you will not know the response Jesus gave him. Because when you look at the law of Moses, even in um, Ephesians, it tells us that honor your father and your mother. Then he says, which is the first commandment with a promise. Now, he, this guy looked at Jesus and then he says, which is the first commandment of all? Now, when he used that word first, he wasn't asking for number one. I want you to understand that. When he used that word first commandment, which is the first commandment of all, he wasn't asking for the number one commandment. He was asking for which is the best commandment of all. All the commandments that God gave. Tell us which is the best command. Now, that was a very intelligent question. He asked Jesus. Now, that, that's to tell you that this man had settled down, had reasoned this thing, and then now he has an opportunity to speak with Jesus. He's going to ask Jesus this very important question. So, I want you to understand that. So, he was not asking for the number one commandment. He was asking for the best the most important, the crowning commandment, the commandment that controls everything. That's what he was asking for. Now, here's the response Jesus gave. And Jesus answered him, the first of the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This, there is none other commandment greater than these did you see that now so jesus wasn't listening number one thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart number two thou shalt love thy neighbor said, no 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 jesus said the best commandment the most important commandment is this he said, first of all everybody here the lord is one and because the lord is one he is saying now uh, that that's another day's talk to, to you know, what, why did jesus say why did the scripture say the lord is one god is another day's talk now because he is one then he says you shall love him with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength meaning Everything about you should be articulated in one direction that it would love the Lord. Now I'm going to talk to you about love. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, my heart is indicting a good man. It is so sweet when the Spirit of God teaches you something. So beautiful. 
So now he says, this is it. You shall love God with everything that is in you. That's what he's saying. You shall take everything, every ingredient, every cell of your body, every strength that you have, every thought of your mind, every resources that you have, every, just your whole being must be geared. You put everything in one direction. What's that direction? To love the Lord. To love God. And then he now said, when you are done doing that, the next thing you're going to do to please God is to channel that love now to your neighbor. Now then, I want to show you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now then, first question you can ask yourself now is, can we love God? But then you want to ask yourself also, hey, what is love? So I said, the first question to ask is, can we love God? Now he says, you must love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. You must love him with it. So I say, can we love God? Now, number one, Jesus would not say or God will not give a commandment that we are not capable of keeping. He would not tell us to do something that he knows we cannot do. He's not that wicked. <laughs> Praise God. So he's not going to do that. He would only tell us something he knows that he has given us capacity to do. Even if we don't know that we have such capacity. There are, in, in life, situations sometimes brings out the best in us that we didn't know we had in us. You know that, right? So I said that even if you don't know God will never tell you to bring forth something you don't have. Now, there are times he has given you something inside of you. You don't even know you have that thing until situation demands that that thing be, bring, be brought forth. Praise God. Now then, so he says you must love God with everything. And then he said, this is the greatest commandment. What is the greatest commandment? Love. Love. Because he said it afterwards. He says, there is none other commandment greater than these, than these two. Loving God and loving your neighbor as you love yourself. He said, there is no other commandment that is greater. There is no other law that is greater than these. Now, how important this sounds. No other. Meaning there is nothing you can think that is greater than love. There is nothing you can think that is greater than keeping the love of God. There is nothing that is greater than doing what God um, commands you to do, which is love. Now I want to show you something in 1 John chapter 4. Quickly, before we round off, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16. Now look at this. 1 John 4, 16. It says, And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. Did you see that? It says, And we know, and we have known and believed the love that God had for, to us. Now notice, he says, the love that God had towards us. The love that God had to us. Then he says, God is love. Now, if God is love and, and he is commanding us to love, love. <laughs> Think about it. Now, how will you be commanded to love, love? <laughs> is God. How? How are you going to love, love? This is love himself. How are you going to love love? <laughs> now, there's, there's a lot we're going to talk about this week. And, and that would, that, this, I'm trusting the spirit of God. That by the time, as we are sharing these things, the ability to love and to walk in love 
is being released upon you. See, it's released through the word. As we speak, you open your heart and like, I, I believe these words. Then love is being made manifest in you. The grace to, to, to receive and walk in love is coming to you. Praise God. As, as, we, as we share on this broadcast throughout this week, and I pray that your heart truly will be open to receive and you will become mighty in love. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My time is up for today, but we're going to continue from this very scripture tomorrow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye.